a lot every single day. And sometimes, you know, like, not every day is something that could best represent me as a person. You know, like, I make mistakes, you know, honestly. Everything is out there. I'm an influencer. And people keep looking you at me. I'm like, I'm, as an iconic religious figure. But I always tell them, no, look at Mufti Ming, because, like, you're, I feel like you're more beneficial. <laughs> Hey, what is up guys? It is a brand new day today. Yo, I am fully gassed right now. Today was an extremely random day. Adam was actually over my crib earlier. And while Mufti Mick was on Instagram live, Adam and I joined them and went live with Mufti. And this was dope because this was actually my first time meeting Mufti Mink. And it was on Instagram Live and it was our first kind of face to face thing. It was amazing. Seriously, y'all, I'm here to talk about it today. I want to talk a little bit about my little face to face with Mufti Mink yesterday. It all started around last year, you know, I was getting a lot of hate for a video I did before. And I made a video responding to all the hate I was receiving. And in the video I stated, y'all, I'm not a perfect Muslim. If you want to look up to someone who's a good Muslim and a good role model, I said, go subscribe to Mufti Mink. Cause that's one dude I actually look up to and respect a lot. Not knowingly, I didn't even tag Mufti Mink. I just mentioned his name. I didn't even tag him, I didn't say nothing. He ended up commenting on that very same YouTube video. He commented and he showed me a lot of love. And ever since that day, man, I, I gained a, a much greater respect and appreciation for him because the fact that he reached out shows that he actually cares. There are people out there that are waiting for you to make a mistake so they can make videos and just violate. And then they call it advice. But that's not the way you're supposed to give advice. But we'll get into that. First thing, as soon as we got on live, man, I was gassed. Because I couldn't believe, man, he accepted, you know, accepted Adam's request right away. And we were connected, and we connected. I just saw Mufti Mink's face, and I just reacted crazy. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, Mufti! Mufti, assalamu alaikum. How are you? Hello, Adam. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going, Mufti? You doing good? I was reacting like a fanboy, bro. I'm not gonna lie, yo. Like, like to the non-Muslims, to people who don't know Mufti Mink, man, he's like the LeBron James of sheikhs. I don't know if that's a weird comparison, but yeah, the LeBron James of sheikhs or scholars. That's a good. That's a good way to explain it. Oh, uh, look at this smile, man. Look, look at the smile. Look at Mufti smile, man. Look at the smile. Mashallah, man. Look at that smile. Smiling is contagious, you know, you make a smile, you have a smile like that, you make everybody in the room smile. Very well, how are you guys doing? You all right? Yeah, we're doing great. We're here in, uh, in New York. In Brooklyn. I love you. I love you so much. Man. Yo, we love you so much. We love everything that you do. Everything. We support. All you do. Everything. <laughs> Let's go. What? Dude, that was awesome, bro. I'll, I'll put up the heart sign like this, and then he gave me the heart sign back. Yo, shout out, Mufti. He the GOAT. Man, he's just too cool, seriously. Mufti is just way too cool. Since it was our first time meeting, I kind of wanted to confess and tell him everything, man, about how I felt about him. Because you guys all know, I, I mentioned Mufti Mink a lot here and there. We love you so much. We love everything that you do. Everything. We support all your teeth. Everything. <laughs> Let's go. What a lovely thing, man. Mufti, honestly, well, I swear, I just want to say, man, your everything, your videos, your words, it helps me become like a better person. Well, uh, seriously. And I appreciate you so much. And I want to meet you one day. Well, I really do. I want to give you a big hug. Michael, you know, look at this. I didn't plan this and you didn't plan this. I just decided, you know what? Let's spread a bit of love and let's try and reach out to the Ummah family by saying a few good words. And here is, mashallah, you know, the duo themselves, mashallah. May Allah bless you guys and give you goodness. The duo themselves. Hey, come on, man. Stop playing with me, bro. Stop playing with me. Mufti said one thing that kind of made me cheese. He was like, do you know what? On Twitter, a few days ago, I read someone saying, please, can you speak to Brother Slim and Adam Saleh? And, and I, I, I just smiled at myself, not knowing Allah has designed it to happen in two days' time right now. Wow. Seriously, so, that's amazing. How amazing is that? Like, seriously, this is live. You gotta understand, this is live. And one thing with Mufti Mink, he always knows what to say. His answers are always well thought out and well, very well spoken. While I was on live with him, I had to confess to him. I had to confess, man. I wanted to confess to him and tell him how I feel, like, you know, about, about me being an influencer, you know, with an audience. Knowing that I'm not perfect, knowing that I make mistakes and my mistakes are out there. I told him all this. I told him all this on IG Live and this is what he had to say. I always, I always shout you out, Mufti, every time. Like, cause people always look at us like, as like, cause honestly, I'm not gonna lie, Mufti, I have, like, I post a lot every single day, and sometimes, you know, like, not every day is something that could best represent me as a person, you know, like, I make mistakes, you know, honestly, and everything is out there, I'm an influencer, 
And people keep looking at you me I'm like, I'm, as an iconic religious figure, but I always tell them, no, look at Mufti Ming, because like, I feel like you're more beneficial to the kids and youth, like as more of an Islamic figure. Like me, I'm, I'm a normal kid, and I mess up a lot. I mess up a lot, and that's the thing. It's, that's the hard part being an influencer, because your, your mistakes are out there, and then the young kids, you, I want the young kids to look at my mistakes as like, you know, like to praise me for my mistakes and stuff. So like, I always tell them, you know, like, do you want to look at someone religiously? Look at Mufti Ming, because honestly, you always help me become a better person with same words and everything. Here, so. My 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 beloved brothers, you know, it's so nice to hear you. Let me give you good news. A lot of the scholars out there have had some terrible pasts. You know, a lot of them have been worse than anywhere you've been to, Brother Slim or Brother Adam. And I'm not trying to 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 say that they are bad. Today they are changed. They are scholars. They're probably very impatient with guys like you. But the reason why I'm a little bit more patient is because I know their past and I've seen where they were. And now that they are out, their impatience is a sign of their love in a way for the cause of Allah. But they don't realize sometimes the damage that happens when you use a bad methodology to get across to people. So people will call you out sometimes to say, listen, that's wrong. This is wrong. Consider what they're saying, because if they are right, it should hurt your conscience a little bit, even though you might. Out of your own pride, you just defend yourself. But at the same time, you must understand that everyone is different. Their way of talking is different. They, they won't show you so much of love to help you come in. They might show you hate to help you come in. So it's just leave the guys where they are. Let them do their peace. You do your peace, inshallah. And, and the only thing that I can recommend to both of you as younger brothers of mine is Every day we should be better than we were the previous day. That's the main thing that I want to just tell you. See now that's how you give advice guys. The Islamic way of giving advice is to, to advise someone in a way they don't feel criticized or offended. And he, he just gave me an advice and we didn't feel offended. We were happy to hear what he had to tell us. And what he said was so real. I mean that he was talking about how there were scholars out there with such a crazy past, but they're completely changed men. And like, I never really thought about that. Cause whenever I see a scholar, all I see is like, you know, a very good Muslim guy, you know, but like at the same time, you never know what they've done in their past. At the end of the day, everybody has a past. Everybody. They're cross to people. So people will call you out sometimes to say, listen, that's wrong. This is wrong. Consider what they're saying because if they are right, it should hurt your conscience a little bit, even though you might, out of your own pride, you just defend yourself. But at the same time, you must understand that everyone is different. Their way of talking is different. They, they won't show you so much of love to help you come in. They might show you hate to help you come in. I love what he said right here. He talked about how when people try to call us out or try to give us advice, even if they do it in a bad way, he said, try to pay attention to some things that they say. I, I feel like a lot of people usually try to use hate to you know draw people in which is not the right way to do it like it's not the right way to do it if you want someone to come in you gotta show them love first and that's that's the way Mufti Ming is doing it man and, and everything he's saying makes a lot of sense to me and I'm, I'm grasping every word and I'm absorbing it to my head because he makes a lot of sense to me and I respect him so much I want all y'all to take that in too man every single day we should be better than we were yesterday all of us gotta take that in that's some really good advice right there I like that one of the biggest reasons why we jumped on this Instagram live was to talk about the situation that was going on in Yemen. As you guys all know, not a lot of people talk about what's going on in Yemen. And it's kind of killing me, it's kind of burning me inside cuz like, you know, I'm a Yemeni, I'm I'm a, I'm a Yemeni American. Adam is Yemeni American and we're like the only like Yemeni Americans with a voice. Well, there's not really much Yemenis out there with a voice. So, I'm, it's kind of starting to mess with me in my head a little bit, like, like I, I got to do something to help out my people. And I got a very good idea and very good plan to make something big for Yemen. I came up with this idea after the IG Live with Mufti Mink, and it's going to be crazy. I cannot wait to start working on this project for Yemen. But we asked Mufti Mink, and this is what he said. What do we do to help, help save Yemen? Because Yemen right now is going through so much in the media. They don't, you know, they don't mention anything about Yemen, and we're Yemeni, and... We're blessed to be in a platform where we're at right now, and so are you. And, and seeing, like, talking to you right now is, is like a dream. You know, knowing that we're live and you can, we can help and say something about help and save Yemen is, is amazing. Habibi, I'm going to tell you something, but you know, some, everyone, everyone has a different capacity and everyone deals with things in a different way. We're all very sad as to what's happening. To us, it's unacceptable under all circumstances. And we, as the Ummah family, would like to see a stop to any form of 
killing, you know, the destruction and so on completely. That's one thing we're all on the same page, alhamdulillah. Then I tell you what I've learned. When we get up for Salat al-Tahajjud and weep to Allah, cry to him, Wallahi, try it out, bro. You know, it, it gives us, number one, a sense of comfort. Number two, you call out to the Lord of the worlds. And it's the first step to me because then Allah opens other doors. I've been in the backgrounds through a lot of humanitarian organizations and aid organizations, reaching out to families within the, the, the area that, you know, you find uh, people who are widowed and orphaned, people who don't have food, they don't have accommodation, they've, their places have been destroyed, they have nothing. So we've tried to reach out as best as we can to actually solve that type of the problem. Because I'm not a politician, I may not be able to solve the political crisis. But because I'm part of the Ummah family, I can at least reach out in a humanitarian way. And that's the minimum that we should be doing. So we make dua, we call out to Allah, we try our best to tell people, I have spoken to some people on quite a high level to let them know how we would love to see an end to all of this. But unfortunately, you know, we don't have that supreme power to stop it. But what we do know is the little that we can do, raise awareness to a certain degree, help out deep in our pockets to a certain degree, quietly go and, you know, uh, attend to a few families. I think if every one of us can help 10 families, and, and we got 10,000 people, we would actually reach out to 100,000 families before you know. It's so great to hear what, what Mufti Ming say, says about us. And he said he knows for a few years, which is crazy to me. Like he, he knew he knew who we were for a long time. And he reached out to me before during the time when I needed it. And he helped me out a lot. And the fact that he, he we joined on his live today and got to talk to him for the first time. Hopefully next time we get to meet in person one day and I get to vlog it for y'all. That'll be so amazing. Oh man, that was crazy. But yo guys, as I was saying, I have a crazy idea for Yemen and I cannot wait to get started on the project. Inshallah, it will be a successful one. It's going to be a big one. I came up with this idea of feeling so much guilt in my head. So I was like, you know what? I gotta do something about this. I gotta do something about this. And me and Adam are teaming up and we're gonna make something happen, man. We're gonna make something happen, inshallah, man. So with all y'all support, man, we can we could do something huge. With all y'all support, we could do something big. So I hope we can make an impact and I hope we could really, you know, make some noise. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Smash the like button, subscribe for daily videos, and I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. Catch me streaming on Twitch tonight at Official Slimmy Slim. Gonna wrap this up here. See you tomorrow with another daily semi vlog and slimification is outcha that was amazing you know these two brothers are popular people very famous guys from the states mashallah brother slim and brother adam saleh and i've known them for many years uh, i've known about them for many years i've reached out once or twice just when certain things have happened sometimes you know we give a good word inshallah and uh, look at how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated this in such an amazing way